Mark Oldman coming at you from Art Basel, Miami to talk appropriately enough about champagne. It's holiday season right now and you know there are a lot of unanswered questions about champagne. For example, I want to know what's the best sort of glass. Everyone says conventionally a flute uh, to keep the bubbles in, but some other people don't like to use flutes. Another idea is should you swirl your champagne? So I get the experts, world experts in champagne, the chef de cave or chief winemaker of Dom Perignon. But let me first get a little refreshment here. A little Rune Art champagne. Thank you so much. Cheers. And without further ado, Richard Joffrey, chef de cave of Dom Perignon. Cheers. Let me ask you about the glassware here. You poured uh, this glass of uh, Dom Perignon in more of a traditional wine glass. Yeah. Uh, is that how you prefer to drink yes, it? Yes, yeah. Uh, I'm not so keen on champion fruits anymore. You know, the, uh, it looks narrow. And uh, in fact, the, the narrow glass of a fruit makes the, the wine uh, narrow on a, in, a, in mouth here. You know, it just tastes, uh, tastes narrow, very two-dimensional. And what we're aiming at is really a third dimension on the pipe. Just a way of filling up and, uh, and touching and caressing. And, uh, and it's all uh, favored by a bigger wine glass. When you have a, a glass of champagne, do you swirl it to get a... a you know, do you worry about uh, damaging the bubbles? Or, or do you go ahead and swirl it to get a, more, you know, more aeration into the wine? Ah, it's an interesting question of knowing uh, swirling not, not swirling and uh, there is even the debate uh, back there in, in Champagne amongst uh, you know so-called wine guys experts or so and uh, personally I do swirl you know but I'm cautious enough to not to lose really all of the carbonation but I, I need to swirl to to have that enhancing of uh, aromas and everything to, to the floor so uh, tell the world that the winemaker don't pay no does <laughs>